setting up on stage for round two between Phoenix One and Immortals. Very fun game there, Jeff, that we got to see. Can't wait to see if the series can go the distance. But long story short, if you did miss it, were you carried? Yes, he was definitely our player of the game. Not only did he kind of be the only winning lane for them early on in the game, he had some really clutch plays late in the team game. Actually getting picks as Cassiopeia, which is weird because he's kind of the backline team fighter. Ryu did a lot of work that game. He did. Lots of strong flashes. Kept them in the, kept them in the game the whole time long. Immortals did do a good job trying to equalize things and getting a lead. But I think I'd like to see them hold on to their leads a little bit more because that mid-game really stagnated for them. Yeah, Dardock started that game 3-0, got 4-0-1 pretty early on, and then, like you said, completely stagnated. So... A lot of that was Phoenix One picking other people on Immortals, and then Dardock didn't have anyone to go and make plays for. But he either needs to be more creative in actually getting kills and making the advantages mean something, because Flame had that 150 CS advantage by the end of the game, but never necessarily got a solo kill. Dardock didn't come over as much to make sure they were finishing the kills on them, and ultimately it left too long to be steamrolled by Phoenix One's team fighting. It did. Endgame certainly did favor them there, and Champs like was kind of a big deal that. I can't help but think that P1 picked themselves the easy comp and Immortals really picked themselves a tricky comp. Now, granted, the fact that the game was so close is impressive on the Immortals side because we knew it was going to be difficult to execute, but yeah. you can't help but think that maybe make things a little easier for themselves here in game two. For sure. The Lee Sin early for Dardock helped for sure, but then where was the rest of the cohesion, right? If they would have had a 4-0 Lee Sin at the start of the game and then they just have the straightforward team fighting composition. You're like, all right, they got this. But they did have that difficult complexity in their composition and couldn't quite close it out. And the other side is also that Flame does look a lot better on the carry style champions. Oh, and yeah. Jay should be a big pick on this patch. So it's going to be a little tough for the mortals to figure out their identity. But we'll see what happens here in this champ select. Rise banned away from Phoenix 1. There's Lee Sin to follow. And Immortals banning away LeBlanc. Expecting Camille and Rengar to come through pretty shortly as well. Yep, we're going to be talking about it all week as well. The fact that we are on pack 7.2. So Courage of the Colossus nerfs. The Maokai Nautilus isn't quite as dominating. Varus much higher priority because of the lethality. If, as if being the number one pick AD carry in week one wasn't already high priority, <laughs> I'd say it's a little higher now. Well, Graves the last band there from Phoenix One. So two jungle bands really joining in with that rise of models. Thinking about this last band again, we expect Camille, but taking their time, maybe discussing the rest of the drop, or perhaps they have something cheeky prepared. But. Only yeah. one team is daring enough to do that, and it didn't work out too well for FlyQuest last week. Absolutely, and I think the Graves ban is actually super interesting, only because we were talking about Graves Jungle making a resurgence with the lethality changes in this patch, and it's something Dardock has been really good on. But with Kha'Zix falling through the draft, now Dardock basically plays Lee Sin into it, which is expected, but I think the Graves has more burst potential than can actually be a good matchup in a Kha'Zix. Making sure they get rid of that. A lot of junglers banned away here. Phoenix one prioritizing that. Flame will go straight back to Jace though, which I think does make sense. It's just how Immortals sculpt the rest of this team comp around it. And they can wait on the Rex side if that's what they want, but Immortals, if they want it, are going to have to pick it in these first three. Yeah, and it's a little trickier, honestly, to play the Jace into a jungler with as much burst as Kha'Zix, because if it is Tank and Kha'Zix in the top lane against the Jace, it's almost a super easy kill, whereas with Rek'Sai, it took a lot longer, and theoretically, Flame could have scaled to a point where that can't be a fight. So, Immortals locking down their soul lanes really early, not giving them any room to counterpick as a red side team. Pretty bold choice. It is, but they're just taking super strong picks here. I mean, lots of mid laners open. Probelta certainly felt the pinch in the last game, so he'll take Syndra. There's Corky for Ryu, so Phoenix want to smartly trading strong picks here, and I almost feel like they're playing on Flame's tendency here, giving him over the Jace, and I think Probelta just feels scared because he got so many mid laners taken away in game one. Yeah, and it secures him a champion he's definitely good at, and the high priority on Varus gets secured as well. This will put Immortals into an interesting spot for sure because there's there's a lot of picks that are still available. In the theory of this draft, they still technically have the next two picks. There's just a big ban phase in between. But Zyra is a champion that's still available somehow. Uh, also, you want to be able to match AD or jungle because that leaves so many ban options for Phoenix 1. And looks like Immortals... Would they at least? No, they'll Olaf instead. I mean, Dada, I think knew we wanted to take a jungler. I do like Olaf a little bit more. It's not Rek'Sai, but it is tankier and kind of supports Flame wanting to play a carry in top lane. Yeah, for sure. Olaf is something that we thought maybe we'd see a little bit more of early on in this split, but 
We have not, due to the prevalence of the Kazakh and the Lee Sin still can be a very strong pick and run straight through you. With Kurd, the Colossus being down as well, uh, you might want to favor him over something like Rek'Sai. Dardock wants to switch things up a bit. See what's happening in band phase two, though, as Poppy Band away from Immortals is going to start to target down that top lane. We saw this in the last one, trying to give Ziga a rough tank matchup. Poppy is one of the champions that absorbs best in these sorts of 1v1s. So you yeah. saw Zig have trouble on Shen. Immortals kind of stick into the plan from game one. Yeah, you wonder if they're going to end up banning the Shen as well, just to put Zig onto a worse duelist when they go up there. The AD band's coming through for Phoenix 1. You would almost expect it to be followed by Jin for sure to push Cody Sun onto a non CC marksman. Could be tricky. Immortals, 15 seconds for their final ban of this draft. They will get first pick out of this phase as well, so be curious to see where they go for now. Can't imagine they aren't going to keep banning top lanes, but they actually ban a support here. Going to take away Adrian's Karma. Yeah, that's interesting. Unless they think the Karma is a really good pick into this support they want, but Karma's also a great pick with Olaf Jungle, so one of those bands that can be seen either way. Zyra here would make sense unless they're afraid of Adrian's MF or they think he has a counter pick lined up. Alright, they're going way different. Yeah, they are. That's a Ziggs, Ziggs actually. So Cody Sung going to play that in the bot lane. I haven't seen this yet in NA, I believe. No, it, it was seen over in Korea for sure. We got to see SKT pulling out the bot lane Ziggs. Unless this is Ziggs support, I would still technically be bot lane Ziggs, but yeah. <laughs> it's, it's going to be a high farm Ziggs, and they have the physical damage locked in because of the Jace, so compositionally it makes sense. But still, really surprised on the lack of priority on Zyra for sure, and we'll see if Phoenix 1 ends up going with that here. I mean, Maokai for Zig is relatively straightforward, but I think Adrian is licking his lips at the Zyra pick. It just seems so good with only Karma as the band, which Immortals also could have used to maybe take away a different support. Adrian, though, does fall back to the Nami. Seems to be a preference for himself. Maybe it's a laning thing. Maybe it's a playstyle thing. We'll have to see. But Immortals get a pick. Looks like their support here. We'll see what Ollie goes for. His Thresh in the last game did do a lot of work for his team as well. So he might want another yeah. pick support. He's been really successful on champions with a lot of skill shots that lead to kills. Morgana, Thresh, potentially Bard. Uh, and this also just kind of tells me that neither of these guys like Zyra because I don't feel like anything super substantial changed that pushes Zyra out of the meta in any way. So let that be known, LCS. <laughs> These guys don't necessarily like Zyra that much as it falls completely through the draft. Yeah, that is the bud for Ole as well. So Phoenix 1, I think very good drafting for them. Put together power picks in almost every single lane. Maybe support not included, but Immortals have a very exciting draft. So we're going to start there. Yeah, I mean, one synergy you could think of is Bard Alt and his Exalt. Uh, timing it just as the Bard Alt expires could be a good way of getting people to stay in that. Lots of poke, another pick composition, but theoretically, Immortals want three shoving lanes. They can get a top lane, Cinder can have priority, and Ziggs can definitely shove in at a very high level. Could have been higher if they would have picked uh, support with a little bit more shoving power, but that's what I expect from Immortals. And Phoenix 1, once again, they got that big tank. Mix of damage, good poke, good team fighting. Plan's pretty much the same for both teams, it looks like. So Immortals, are they going to run into the same problems? Does the Ziggs change anything really in that bot lane? Can it give them the power to get an even bigger early game lead? We're going to have to find out. Coders will shake hands. Seeing Ibo raised there from Herbie's like, yep. Didn't expect that Karma ban, did you? He's like, no. Yeah. We wanted yeah. Nami anyway. By the way, that was strange. <laughs> I agree, that was strange. Let's walk off stage now. <laughs> well... Always fun to see, after such an exciting game number one, where we go with similar looking comps. But the first Ziggs bot in the NALCS should be fun. First bot as well, so a brand new bottom lane, yeah. NALCS. Yeah, pretty exciting. And I, and I also kind of want to just reiterate to people, we have been fairly critical of Hermes drafts on Immortals, but you also have to keep in mind the constraints a coach is potentially working with. Flame has looked bad on the meta tanks like Maokai and Nautilus, so they're putting him on carries because that's more of the type of player he is. But that has far-reaching implications to the rest of your draft phase. And then you take a support like Olay, who's had the most success on this skill shot based characters, not necessarily on the Zyra and the Malzahar. So it's not, it may or may not be that Hermes doesn't like those champions, but his team might not, not be able to play them. So you have to find creative solutions. And this is the creative solution it looks like they've tried to think of. I'm certainly going to agree with the creative part of that. As Immortals, we'll move in and try and get some vision down. We did see an invade last game, so we'll see if Similar visions put down here. Cody Sunder already taking poke arrow. That was slick. Dodges out from under that cute. 
So already off to a good start here. You can see he's played against it before. That's not Ooh. as nice. Good cue there from Ole. One for one so far. Yeah. Although the trade is equal <laughs> on both sides because oh, a little less than equal. Level one Ziggs Q, not a huge amount of damage. And another early invade by Dardock. Yep, he's going to keep throwing some axes, get him a no Zig. But also run himself a little low on mana. Minions yeah. Looks like he's going to take the blue buff, so maybe that was the plan all along. Zig is going to spot this out, but we can see Inori is on that red buff, so we might have yet another vertical jungle, and it does feel like Dardock is at least covering for the top half of the map with a lot of these paths, which makes sense given that Flame does want an isolated lane for himself. Mm -hmm. Also notice the fervor on the Olaf. Still Courage of the Colossus for Zig though, so once again, that's substantially nerfed in 1v1 situations in lane on this patch. Look for Flame to really try and take advantage. Also note how Inori's starting with the pull from his bot side because he wants to be able to rush over to the other blue buff that Dardock will not be able to make it to. Yep, you can see Dardock got a bit of help from Flame on the other side, so once again, we'll have some vertical jungling instead. And Ryu shooting Cobalt early on, as this might be the fun lane to watch. Arrow taking early damage from Ole and his Thunderlords. And Ziggs, pretty curious bot laner here, but can do a lot of shoving and get some good damage down. When you set up for nice CC yeah. trades, Ziggs shines. Yeah, and the shove is actually pretty remarkable. Uh, level three, two Qs kill the back wave. Level nine, one Q kills the back wave as a Zig, so always trying to kill that turret. However, the Varus can match that shove pretty well, especially if he goes tier build. Ole just shutting out the blast cone option. Ooh, now you have to walk through the pathway. Doesn't really kill any time for Inori. I like it. It's a bit of fun. Our route. level two already, though. Chunking down okay. Cody's son. Does have his summoner heal and his flash, so it should be safe for now. Now hits level two. Oh, they're going to have to put those caretaker shrines into overtime. Yeah. As it's... And there could also be a laning reason that Adrian wants the Nami as well. Uh, it's just because the sustain for any of the Ziggs poke is there. Dardoch chasing Inori out of his jungle, pops the ghost. That's going to immediately prompt him to leave. Slow lands in, though. Dardoch still chasing. Another Q lands in. Inori does have his flash, but when is he going to use it? There it is. Very nicely done. Gets up from under Ole's Q as well. Yeah, smart from Dardoch seeing the level 2 Inori saying he does not have a leap yet. I'm going to ghost right now. He knows ghost is a lower cooldown than the flash. Getting that summoner spell trade early is very beneficial. Arrow level three, though Oli having to leave the lane means Cody's son has to play back towards that turret and here's Flame. Oh, good dodge from Zig. But Flame still effortlessly winning the end of that trade, although Sapling actually evens it back out for Zig. Yeah, ended up taking a little bit of damage as well. Has the triple health potion longsword start that we're seeing popularized by the bot lane carries recently because they want to rush to the lethality items. No different for Flame. Going to make him vulnerable to ganks, but... Since he just seen Anori down bot very low, felt safe to go for a very aggressive trade. Seems a little better for Poe Belto. This minion wave will give Ryu back the uh, kind of CS neutralization, but Poe Belto getting damage onto the turret. Ryu falls back early. Cinder really just doing what she's intended to do in the lane, and you can see the difference it's making giving Poe Belto a high priority mid laner already four minutes into the game. Yeah, so Immortals wanted to have three lanes that can shove in. It looks like they have two lanes that can shove in as of now. Cody's son took a lot of poke from Arrow early on, and Adrian is kind of the X factor being able to out sustain in this poke matchup, so it's looking like a strong Nami pick early on at least. Inori and Dada gonna butt heads again. Inori gonna spot him. Hello. Crab got a smite. Yeah, he's Walks got over and gets it, says thanks for the leash, and leaps out of that axe. Easy steal there for Inori. Fights continue. No mana on Ziggs. Exhaust down though. Ole trying to all in onto Arrow, but the heal's gonna be popped. Exhaust now lands on the Cody's son. Ole backs off from the fray, a little low on health and mana. P1 again with that sustain lead, continuing to press our advantage here. Yeah, and we should talk a little bit more about bot lane Ziggs, since this is something people thought was going to be a little bit more prevalent, especially when they saw it just at the start and then wasn't seen very much. Uh, so much of his ability here is partly due to just random bits of his kit, not necessarily because he's amazing bot lane, but he's got 575 range which outranges a lot of marksmen. Unfortunately, not Varus, who also has 575 range, so that's not a bad in this matchup. Also, the massive wave clear outshoves most other AD carries. Not Varus again, so it's like, he's gonna mainly be used just as a differentiation of damage, and if they want quick burst on turrets, because otherwise, you would've wanted something 
like the Ash of the Jinn, but that was just simply banned out. So I actually feel like this is a, a an answer to try and get those same shoving tendencies you get out of a physical damage caster, which is what Jin is, and just a magic damage caster now in Ziggs. Yeah, important to remember that you're right, Cody Sun did kind of have picks fall down the draft with P1 banning him out in phase two. Things not looking too hot right now, but Aaron and Adrian looking good on the other side. Tensi has ahead, Cody Sun should be able to play catch up as Zig doing the same here in this lane. Flame gonna teleport and join him in. But uh, Tensius and counting now for Flame. He does have the early Warhammer and that Longsword. And you can see just why the matchup doesn't look too fun for Zig. Yeah, and I wonder if Flame is going to freeze this wave and try and deny some CS from Zig because they both had just teleported back in the lane. So getting the substantial amount of poke down can really have some long reaching effects. Well, Dudok again. Blast cones over, finds an Ori. Oh! Oh! Uh oh, that one went to Dardock and he's caught. No stun's gonna land, but Ola's gonna chase him down. Adrian here, fends him off with the bumble. Oh, oh God, God, that's a in there as well. There's a stun in him. First blood to Immortals mid laner. Super greedy invade by Inori right there, trying to maximize his isolation as far as jungle clearing goes, especially this patch on Kha'Zix. Some of the jungle camps hit a lot harder. Gromp hits harder, Krugs hit, har hit harder. So he's really just trying to make sure he can clear the individual camps fast and has no flash on this invade as well, not to mention his mid lane was not able to roam first, so not much the rest of Phoenix One can do as Inori gets caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Yep. Pays for it as well. Has a nice kill for Cobalt. That should help him out in the lane. It's already looking pretty comfy. Actually, first item by his dump for those mid laners, but we'll hold on to that as Dardok back down to the bottom side. Looking for Adrian as his kill. There's the flash out from Nami. Exhaust is ready, but Dardok is going to force them back. Arrow slowed up as Cody Sun almost gets himself sniped. Arrow, not quite enough mana for another Q, I don't think. As yeah. Bobelt is going to join the fray as well. Arrow skill shot Turn accuracy around. really high. And that's what's really pushing this lane in his favor. Cody Sun's been hit by too many of those, and they just don't have the same level of sustain to be able to keep himself alive. Onori looking for a buff, does not find it, continuing his aggressive invade tendencies despite the fact that he just got himself killed. But Dardok kind of doing some nice work around the jungle. He's actually two levels ahead of Inori right now, which is a massive lead in experience. And Ole even warding up his camps. Dardok, it feels like he's got an immeasurable amount of control at this point. Now going to donate blue buff over as well. And you can see reflected in a slight gold difference, but Inori just real far behind. He really is. and. That happens when he has two somewhat failed invades into the enemy Gromp early on in the game. And even speaking to the wider story of the series, Dardoch was winning pretty heavily in game one as well. Uh, this game in particular though, even though Inori had first choice of jungler with the Kha'Zix, uh, the lanes are just heavily shoving in the favor of Immortals in the mid and the top lane. Although Ryu doing a very good job staying even with the Hex Drinker on Corky. And actually shoving in as well, so it could just be Flame. I mean, certainly Flame. He's Long been... story short, Jardok's doing well, but Flame is always winning his lane. Yeah, Flame, I mean, they gave him the first pick, Jace, two games in a row. Looking to succeed here versus the tank matchup and continuing to do work here. Zig is keeping up a little better, I think, but Flame is going to be as oppressive as he can in that 1v1. Immortals up not quite a thousand gold just yet, so off to a decent early start, but it's not the same speed that Immortals had in the first one. Maybe looking to play a bit calmer this game, slow things down a bit. In Phoenix 1, we saw they were comfortable in that sort of game. They've got a similar looking comp to try and run here as Ryu just ducks his way out from under the stun, but Pobelta really shoving things in. Ryu is keeping up. Blue buff's going to help here as well, but always looking to move around. Immortals, again, playing it a little softer than game number one, but certainly feeling like they're kind of comfy early on in the game. Yeah, and it is really important that Pobelta is doing well. He was a big weak point in the last game, I believe, starting at 0-4 at one point on Victor, and it really allowed Ryu to take off. Here on the Corky, the ideal build for Corky is just to rush to a Trinity Force, but he just cannot do that against Syndra, so his natural power spikes of getting the Trinity Force uh, are naturally delayed. So that helps Immortals once again in trying to set up plays. And you're hoping for Immortals that if they can just get off the successful ganks to then just transition them into the objectives because they want to have multiple shoving lanes, Dardock gets a play, and then they run train. Well, you can see Mountain Break up as well. 10 minutes in, could be some sort of contest for the objective. Ole poking around, consistently leaving the lane and trying to find some poke here as Cody Sun just shoves the wave back as best he can. 20 CS down right now as Inori lies in wait for a potential kill, but as a control ward going to spot them out, Inori going to get hit by the skill shot. They'll clear out the ward and perhaps revisit in another time. Just meanwhile, Ryu just casually tanking two turret hits and burning the package. That's fine. That's totally fine. <laughs> yeah. 
Definitely. Good wave clear there <laughs> as well. That's what it was for. <laughs> yeah. Push up and get the wave clear. Looks like they want to go for play. But Adrian, there's Dardock down as well. Ulti not quite there. Lands actually in onto Dardock, but Adrian's going to get blown up here. The kill over to Dardock as Pope Elta solo oh. killed in that mid lane. And he lost both summoner spells. What happened with Pope Elta there? Doesn't even get Ryu's Hex Drinker. Nori wanted to come in to the, for the assist, but was not able to get there. So Mortal's bot lane actually works, but it's Pope Elter. We're going to have to get a replay on that kill. And we talked about how much better it was looking for Pope Elter, and all of a sudden it goes wrong. Isolated Death looking a little high there for poor old Pope Elter. He's winning in that statistic, which unfortunately yeah. is not a good column to be winning in. This also stops him from being able to get Baron, so he just gets the stun and goes for an all-in, but the exhaust hits right as he's ulting. Ryu also had the backup of the Hex Drinker, so just misjudging his damage pretty substantially there and also had used all of his peel by stunning Ryu in the first place. Overgression from Pro Belter and just misplayed. Really nice stuff there. And Ryu goes back at Sork Shoes after getting his kill, so really maximizing the early damage, looking to maybe get an even bigger lane advantage 1v1. Inori, though, clearing out the Grump safely this time. He's on his own side of the map, so things looking a little better. Zig does return with the Barmy Cinder and the Ninja Tower. Actually seems quite a bit better as far as CS differential goes. So Flame, yes, he's still winning and pretty heavily at that. Yeah. But he doesn't seem to be growing the same immensely that he was before. And I think a lot of it is to do with, with Dardoch just not getting off to the same start. Immortals can't be as aggressive and rush down these turrets. And if the game is at more of a medium pace, I think Phoenix One feel a bit better, at least early on. Yeah, and they want to be able to hit the power spikes on their Corky and their Varus to be able to come right back at Immortals. And I do want to talk about the, the Ziggs just a little bit more in this game, just because the reason that people were picking Ziggs earlier, I felt like, was to hit earlier power spikes, which would be the Morellonomicon first, because at the time, everyone was going Essence Reaver ADs into a crit item, into an Infinity Edge, and they weren't turning on power-wise until like eight or 10,000 gold. But teams have already solved that problem. That's why you're seeing the Lethality builds out of the Varus and the Jin, because those have very early power spikes, and they're able to have impact when the game matters. So Ziggs actually doesn't give you any of those unique advantages other than the fact that he does magic damage. So it's really, it's actually not a great pick right now, in my opinion, in pro play, especially against Varus. If you're against an Infinity Edge slow scale and carry that can't shove lane early, then it's good. But here, I feel like Cody Sun was really forced into the pick because of the bans. And yeah, the bans definitely not helping him. Maybe Cody Sun just didn't feel comfortable after those three champions were banned away. It's hard to say exactly why they fell to this pick, but mm -hmm. it does seem to be a bit of a struggle as Arrow is ahead 20 CS. Cody Sun does have the Morella Nomicon finish now, so his power will increase pretty nicely with that first pickup. But P1 seem to have control of bottom lane. Mid lane, certainly back in the hands of Ryu, or at least even between the two. Mm -hmm. And top lane going much better than it was for the last game. I mean, the comps are similar, the pace feels similar, but just that touch slower for P1, who are comfortable to carry it into the mid game. I mean, the gold is not showing much. Oh dear, no bar to help him. Cody Sun caught out, that's an easy kill. Very nice brush snipe as all eight. We're gonna try and land something up on a Ryu. Oh, he cuts back around the tower, but the Cinder ulti. Gonna try and move in for a Dardoch, just dives in, there's a stun, and that's gonna be a kill. Inori, though, gonna take Ole out for the trade. Not quite there in time to save Mizig. He's joined in as well with the teleport, but I think Pobelter and Dardoch have gotten themselves out. Yeah, it's gonna be a little interesting, but they don't want to tango with a 3v2, considering the investment that Immortals had on that play. Uh, to still trade a one-for-one one isn't that good, and Cody Sun was all alone in that bottom lane, died because he pushed up too far, but that's gonna be first turret. And that's nice, Arrow and Adrian getting themselves that gold pretty much solo in the 2v2. In fact, I think the only visit to this lane was Dardoch for Immortals mm -hmm. getting that early kill. I mean, Flame and Dardoch will trade for the top turret now. Anori will take the blue for a bit of extra advantage on the play. But again, Immortals, they took the top out of first last time, managed to get Flame a nice yeah. long lane to try and freeze in. But that's P1 have the uh, kind of initiative this time around and might even take the Drake as well. Now they have the Scuttle, they recognize Dardoch was just missing, but they don't want to risk anything early. And we're going to see this one more time. Cody just thought they were back because they'd been very patient in that rush. Hadn't showed for an entire creep wave. Watching this fight in the mid lane as well. They know there's no summoners on Ryu, so Dardoch just kind of has to walk in him because Ole had the turret aggro. The approach by Inori was very well timed, waiting until Immortals chased through the turret to be able to come in for that extra. 
in the package again for Ryu. Didn't get too much use out of it before, but might get much right better this time. Right into the enemy jungle with it. Dardock looks for the red buff, doesn't get it. Could smite actually from Dardock secures it. We both are roaming up. That means Ryu has to leave. But good pressure applied. He was looking for top lane. Yep. Flame smartly backed off. But Ryu starting to leave this lane's bad news for Immortals. That's bad too. Pavel's going to get chunked. Wave is going to hit him. There's the ball. Oh, follow up and Ryu with a snipe. And the support gank comes in huge for Adrian. Now Ole, all out on his own. Isolated indeed versus the Kha'Zix. And Ori going to get some vision and realize he doesn't want to chase into unknown territory. But pings out into the mountain. Drake P1 have mid to potentially shove down as well. Yep. Just transitioning the Varus around the map as well and trying to take that bot lane strength elsewhere. Just pushing back. Dardock would have to go all in if he wants to stop this. They're just trying to wave clear. Zigzalt is nice from Cody Sun. Gets him anyway back from under the tower, but P1 have two good choices to make here. So with mid being the initial objective, have to back away, but happy to get the Drake here instead. P1 know they force only good choices out of themselves there, and Immortal decide to protect the only thing they could, which was the turret. Dardock. They might want to go for this, surprisingly. Stall the Drake. I know he's got smite. Dardock does not. That's going to be the Drake over. Leaps out to safety as well. Nice attempt from Ole, but very clean and calm from P1. Yeah, and that's a little bit more of the Scatter the Mortals we saw in Week 1, where they're kind of going for a play that has a low percentage chance of working. Dardock didn't even have smite available when they went to stall the Drake with the Bard ultimate. So knowing that Anori would be able to hop away, that place is not going to work. Now they try and pressure the bottom lane, but Phoenix One has everyone there to defend. Yep. Healing act from Adrian actually proving to be quite nice once more as Flame did TP for that play, I believe, as well. So it's look, look, looking a little tricky. The cooldowns will now be desynced. Cobalta shoving in where he can, building in towards what looks like a Luden's Echo second, but Ryu is ready with the Trinity Force, and this is where things get real fun for Corky. It really does. Corky has the strongest point in the game around the 20 to 30 minute mark, and then he actually does fall off a little bit when he approaches six items just because of how quirky the heavily magic damage attack scaling thing is that is his kit. Uh, thinking about the rest of this game though is it is fairly similar to what happened in game one where Flame has a decent sized edge in his top lane and the question will be whether he can create split push opportunities and then whether or not Immortals can get picks because Phoenix won probably stronger in team fights and also winning in a couple of different lanes. Well, this is kind of a good start. Ole, no bot ulti, but tried to make something happen there towards the bottom half of the map. Good ward coverage from P1, though. We'll prevent that from going too wrong. Pobelt's going to try and challenge Ryu. He's just going to push the wave in and back away from it. Good wave clear there from Pobelta. Both these mid laners should be very good at shoving waves back and forth. But Ryu, we've seen him roam a little bit more. Flame, I think, feels not nearly as safe as he was, given that the game hasn't quite opened up as much for yep. him. And Flame is, I think, the key person that needs to get going and get the split push started. So the fact that he's had not as good a start and the CSA is even significantly different means that Riga's getting all in the mid lane. Zigdo going to protect him. Dardo looking to dive in, but Inori's here. They might turn around. The last axe is not enough. Oh. And Zig is just tanking everything. But Immortal still has everyone here, so they're going to try and get some turret damage down and end up backing away just in respect of the rest of the team. So it looked like that could have been a big play for Immortals, but they get nothing out of it. And again, the side lanes aren't going as well as they were in game one. So instead, they group together and try and make a play for the turret in mid. P1, though, defend pretty well off the attempt. And now going to get some counter shopping back. About Ryu is back to a side lane. Looking to make his way down towards the bottom lane and collect farm there. And Arrow, happy to see Jeff Cody Sun knows he does not want to get sniped. Yeah, just Ghost Blade for the positioning on that snipe, and I agree with you about Ryu being bot lane. This is a more natural position uh, from a champion select perspective to have in a side lane. Corky, especially once he can get the package, unlocks a large amount of map mobility that Cassiopeia just doesn't have. He pulled it off last game, though, going with it this game. And it does feel like P1 kind of know they want to take this mid out of turret if possible. Adrian chased down by Dardock, though. Could she support do not favor well? Arrow stunned as well, actually, by Ole, but... No follow-up there as the TP is going to come in from P1. And Nori is going to look to make it happen again. Now the snipes move in. Spikes are good, but a good exhaust. It's going to be the snipe. Cody Sun able to collect one, but Immortals health looking a little low. Yeah, and a nice counter there by Immortals. Was surprised to see Phoenix One's teleport from Zig when Ryu was still in River. So even after the teleport, they were still going to be down a man. And Anori jumps in a little bit too far, but now the poke begins. Yeah, Dardock chunked in this turret was already pretty low. They'll commit a little bit more, and they will take the turret P1. They lose Anori, but make a 
very fair trade for themselves. Yeah, Anori pays for his overgression, but the theory of the play could work if they were just a little bit more patient. Now Ryu's hoping to catch out Cody's son. He's, He's got, got him. Thumbs. Ryu going in for it. Exhaust is down. Ulti out from Cody's son, and a good satchel might keep him safe. Stun goes wide from Ole, and Ryu, good little play, but Cody's son gets, it, gets himself out. Yeah, burned a couple summer spells, so not bad. Overall, map pressure stays slightly in the favor of Phoenix 1. <laughs> These two have been up to <laughs> no good all game long. They're going to go for it. Dar Darvik has ultimate. Yeah, they're going in. Adrian's like, no, 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 no. And now Tardok's like, yeah, that doesn't work on me. I'm all out. Ryu's still here, though. Ole actually going to get all in. They might trade back for support. Oh, Ryu here we go. Down. Does take Ole with him, but Pobelta's in. Ultimate out. Is that Minori going to join the fray? Pops Pobelta. Mmm, those are the ones that hurt when the fight gets decided by missed skill shots right there. Looked like to me, Paul Belter missed pretty much everything and Ryu gets out alive. When I, I, I felt like Immortals had the advantage coming into that fight as well. So very tight margins right here. Looks like all of Ruse perhaps. So we'll watch this one again. Dada can always yeah. setting it up. Yeah, so you can see they hop over with the Blast Cone. Adrian can't bubble because he's Olaf. Pops the ultimate. Exhaust comes down though because they have double exhaust on the team, and it's smart of Ryu to go straight for Ole and Dardock here. But here is where they should kill Ryu, but you miss the first Q, he ults straight, and then he does get the stun and an extra Q, so I was incorrect of saying he missed everything, but that first Q, as well as getting multiple orbs on the ground before he presses his ultimate for that little bit of extra damage, the Hex Drinker and now Maw coming in huge. Just didn't have enough. You can see how much damage Ryu was able to dish out in that last exchange. And P1 starting to take pretty firm control of this game 22 and a half minutes in. Big objective starting to come back up as Cloud Drake is going to be on the menu in 10 seconds. And Baron is alive and well. P1 continuing their rotation play, looking to take out topside this time. And in fact, Ryu able to do that on his own. Yeah, and a fight coming in right here. Ooh, good stun again. Flame not quite tagged, but Ryu wants it. Not going to leap too far forward. Phoenix 1 just kind of tightening the noose. Looking at incrementally gain that advantage, kind of play Immortals around the map. Because Immortals, when they don't have the sideline pressure, when they can't find clean picks without the vision, their comp just does not look as good. Exactly, and Syndra, when you are not pretty far ahead, does struggle a fair bit. So he's got to worry about Zig getting on top of him because if he gets CC'd by anything, essentially the poke from the Corky and the Varus takes him clean off the map. And the same could actually be true of the Ziggs, even though Cody Sun has a little bit more mobility, it's going to be a tough game for Mortals because they have these ranged poke champions without great ways of keeping people off of them. So Phoenix One might just look to steamroll in for fights. He's another pick. In fact, Pro Belter is oh. far too far forward. Oh, but can he just walk away? <laughs> Again. Hard? Oh, he's like, all right, I got you. Don't worry. And now Mortals might even go for Man. a play in the Drake pit. Well, they got to be careful because it's it's setting up a 5v5. They're really hoping to get a pick on a squishy. Uh, that's not a squishy. That might be, though. Ryu still took half his health. Satchel turned his ass. Stuns him against the wall. Great double stun, actually, from bottom flame. Snipes one off as Zig goes down. P1 going to be playing 4v5. Yeah, so that's an example of the amount of burst damage they can throw out. Zig not yet that super tank status was unable to ever get a Courage proc. Oh. Now they go for Ryu. Cute little play. Ryu takes damage from Dardock now as he's going to run towards him. Zig did get some burst down, but Ole caught him by the chance of corruption. Teammates are there, though, so he'll be safe, and Immortals are still pushing mid. Yeah, Dardock gets trolled by the baby magical journey there, but yep, they have the Ziggs as well. He might want to try and get that turn in execute range. Can't quite do it, and now they have to be a little fearful of the counter -attack. Oh, Ole going to go down to Ryu again. He's had bud for breakfast today. Oh. Ryu, four kills still in this one. We're going to carry once again. Yeah, and there isn't someone who can easily tank through that damage. I also have to point out the double exhaust from the Phoenix One team on Ryu and Adrian is really altering Dardock's ability to just fly in as the Olaf. As soon as he goes in, he gets exhausted, can no longer threaten, has to kind of run straight back out. Well, Cloud Drake, as a result of the exchange in play, We'll give Phoenix one their second break of the game to accompany their mountain. Again, it's been a slower paced game than the first one here, but Phoenix one have felt in control. They're a thousand gold ahead right now, which is good, but not a monumental lead by any means. Mm -hmm. But again, it just feels like they've got 
a little bit more as far as the overall game control goes. And I think Immortals, if they're going to get something going, it has to kind of start now. They've got five to ten minutes maybe to really open up a big advantage. You can see their items are starting to come out. Flame maybe can find space in the side lane to get some work done, but something has to happen soon. Feels like it, especially if they're able to stack up some magic position, important positions in with Edge of Night, Mon Malmortius, and Mercurial Scimitar, even if Phoenix One wants to continue to build damage, they can also work it in with the magic resistance. So at that point, it would literally just be the Jace poke that they would need to have any hey. type of armor for. But they still got that Jace or the Ziggs turret execute. And you can see how much work they can get done with the Ziggs. That's one of the features of Satchel Charge that was changed quite a while ago now. Immortals, if they can get damage on this charge, will take them freely. And this is actually really nice. Flame looking to take that as well. Arrow gonna get jumped on by Dardock, but Dardock's gonna get jumped on by Phoenix One. Can't be disabled for a little while longer, so not going to eat that bubble. Good stuff from Olay. Here guy, though. Satchel Charge lands in, so he's going to get buffed away, but he's going to chase him down the magical journey. Olay going to miss that Q. And both teams escape with no casualties. Yeah, and both teleports expended as well. Flame cancelled his and wants to keep shoving that bottom lane, but they have to respect the Baron. Kazix Baron with Mountain Drake is really fast, so Immortals... Playing a dangerous game right here, not face checking. No blue trinkets up right now. They have two, but they're both on cooldown. So Phoenix one. They have no options other than face check or give up the Baron, except for that part ultimate. Nice ult there from Ole, but P1 can pull away pretty safely. Zeke in the front side. Gonna tank up the majority of that damage. And Flame is still pushing, but P1 is gonna force this fight. Yeah, the longer they're on Baron without killing it, though, the more poke they will take from the Baron. So Immortals hoping to find their way into this fight. Will Phoenix One peel for it? Oh, it's Ryu actually getting chased in by Flame. P1, that's looking a little scattered. In fact, the Nori's forced to leap out of the way. Redemption gonna heal them up very nicely. Redemption's still good. Yeah, turns out. <laughs> and that's gonna force them off the Baron, in fact. But that's actually great news for Immortals because they can continue pushing through. Cody's son not gonna join Flame, but Flame's not having any of this. And now he's gonna leave, all right. Yeah, has to be fearful of the home guarded recalls that come through from Phoenix One, but still a promising stop to that Baron force since they did not have good vision in the area and Flame was starting from the bottom side of the map to stop that with no casualties and even arguably pull an advantage out of it. It's good for mortals. Well, P1 might be looking for a pick on the Cody's son here. Oh, Dardoch again. in the area as well. Now going from again, again. they're gonna up. Cody's son gonna get isolated and torn apart by the Kha'Zix. Yeah, and they somehow just Oh, through all the wards. Hi, Ryu. Dardo pops his ulti. Good use of the package effort from Ryu to poke them down. P1 on the siege, or potentially the Baron play. Yeah, because Cody's son being down and having no Ziggs ult even when he revives will make it a little bit easier. But we're still pretty early on into the game, so Phoenix One still may be thinking about the pick. Everyone's in the Baron pit. Jace Q is down as well. Dardo as well, and when they also don't have a Bardolph for another few seconds. Yeah, this is going to be tight. Ole needs to go back in for it, but Baron looks to already be down. Decisive play. Oh, that looked close. Ryu secures it for his team, though. It's going to be all right. Yeah, in, in realistically, that was an uncontested Baron, but Ole tried anyway. Trying to go for the highlight play, couldn't quite get it. Overall, it was pretty much just the pick on Cody's son that set all of that up, and then because they weren't able to land any substantial poke before Phoenix One jumped in that pit, it was just all too easy for Phoenix One. Looking clean still, Phoenix One. Still only up a thousand gold, but looking to do again real damage with the Baron buff. Got a good amount done with the early Baron in game number one, but this feels like an even better position with seven turrets already traded between the two teams. The damage that Phoenix One does to the next turrets are gonna knock down tier two turrets, maybe inhibitor turrets, maybe really open up the map and start to put P1 in a game winning position rather than the advantage they just have now. But Immortals, they fought out of it last game. We'll see if they can do it again here. Yeah, and so much of it has to do with the poke that can or cannot land from Phoenix One. Arrow and Ryu do so much long-range poke. It's one of the reasons you see Varus paired with Corky so often is not only are they two strong poke champions, they also do different damage types. So it's very hard to prevent yourself from getting poked down when you don't have sustain. And they've got the three damage items on both of their different marksmen here. So it's looking good as Cody Sun is going to eat that first bit of poke. Pobelt are trying to clean the minions out, but Baron is a little too tough. Zig's going to tank up the tower for a little while, and Ryu's going to shoot that first one down. Level 17, Corky. It's good poke yeah. there from Pobelt. is going to force the tidal wave out of Adrian. And you also think about the way Immortals is going to try and engage. They don't have a dedicated initiator. They need to catch someone 
with Pobelter scattered the week four, maybe teleport in behind with the Jace, who's not that great of a flanker. So these sieges are relatively safe with Phoenix when they have a disengaged champion in Nami. And Immortals doesn't have a hard engaged champion to kind of counter that. No, they don't. As uh, Ole actually burns the redemption just to heal the team up before the next seed wave. Adrian, of course, has his healing as well. P1, you know, just heat up another tier two turret. For you, every shot really counts on the turret right now. He's gonna take tower dagger. That's a little ugly, but they should be able to take this one down. Just needs a few more shots. Ole gonna try and make it happen. Baron yeah, Canyon is the only one left in stasis, and turret's gonna fall. Yeah, and that's pretty much it for Immortals as far as their initiation. They have to hope they land a good Bard ultimate. And if they don't, they have absolutely no follow-up. So like you mentioned, with the Baron buff, Phoenix won't able to take down multiple turrets. Also just take that into another Mountain Drake, which will enhance their next Baron play. Things turning in Phoenix One's favor pretty heavily. The advantage seems to be building. As Mountain number two is now secured. Elder Dragon's gonna be next on the table with P1. I think looking to speed up the pace of the game just a little bit more. It feels like the plan that looked so good and dragged the game on for so long for Immortals in the first one, just not there this time around. Flame has been really kept down, and yes, he still has a significant CS <laughs> yeah. lead here. He's still a good Jace, but it's just not the same map with influence he had in the first one. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, they haven't needed to dedicate anything to stopping Flame. I think it's the biggest difference and you haven't seen Flame taking down many turrets based off his map pressure. No objectives have been gained via the split push, so it is just that 70 CS advantage. And then you look at the trouble of sustained damage, because that's ultimately what takes down tanks in the late game. And with the Ziggs and Syndra and the Jace, it's almost all front-loaded burst. So if they go through that one cycle and don't get a kill onto Zig, they're just gonna be victim to Kha'Zix and the onslaught of damage that Phoenix One can throw back at them. And Phoenix One have Pretty insane amounts of damage on this team comp. Double Marksman tends to do that for you as they're off onto another siege. Baron Buff has dropped here, but Minion's gonna stay alive for long enough. B, you're gonna take the turret. He's not too me. As a heal comes back then onto Adrian. And once again, Ryu is casually dodging skill shots as Phoenix One gonna look to really crack things open here in the top lane. Yeah, it's gonna be really difficult to do without Baron, so I think the main goal of this one is to just get a semblance of control over this jungle for when they want to peel back for Baron, but who knows? The initiation is so low on Immortals that they might just try and poke down without the Baron buff. Yep, and if they can get some poking on the squishies, Poe Belter actually already sitting real low. Ole! Get the flash. Gonna force that out from Arrow, but P1 still happy with the siege. Poe Belter has to run all the way back to base, so P1 have about 20 seconds yeah. to try and lay in a bit more. And you may think that was a little pre preemptive for the flash on arrow, but Phoenix One understands that the only good initiation is that Bard ultimate, so do everything you can to not get caught into it and then just keep sieging as usual. Ghost Blade, I hear one. I think it's Arrow. And he's looking to move in, but it was playing for a second. Dada can no longer be disabled. Pops his ultimate versus Adrian's Tidal Wave. Playing with a good bit of poke in. Arrow looks for an exchange, but does not find it with the piercing arrow. And Phoenix One, happy to keep the siege going. There's really nothing else they need to do right now. Yeah, pretty much. There's no flame in a side lane trying to accelerate the choices from Phoenix One. Phoenix One is able to take full control of the jungle, spread control wards, make sure they walk through. Hopefully they can catch that control ward on their way out because that's a little bit of safety for Immortals knowing about the next Baron, which will be up in a minute 45. Another greedy looking play from Inori. Doesn't get him killed this time, but... Managed to leap away as the level 16 Kha'Zix, so all evolutions now put into the QW. And he looks like a big wave bottom lane was the concern there for Phoenix One, but Baron's now up in a minute 30, so they'll happily take care of that before they make their play onto this second Baron. But that Ryu is collecting a monstrous amount of CS this time around. Max level with the package. He's ready to fight. Yeah, package will be up for another 30 seconds or so, so... Unlikely they can use it around an objective, but it's nice to have that as security as he makes sure they get that bottom lane shoved up. So really Phoenix One just thinking a couple of minutes ahead, trying to get all the waves in the right position before they go for a Baron, where I feel like they're hoping to just start a team fight with Zig in the front and pile in after. Yeah, I've been overall very impressed with uh, the planning and general map movement from Phoenix One. It looks very clean, very cohesive, which is impressive for a new mixed language team. Mm -hmm. Whoever's calling the shots on this team, whatever's happening in the infrastructure department, it looks good in, on, in, in game, it looks good in the draft, and just looks very clean for a team that we thought might take a little longer to start to gel. Yeah, I mean, Phoenix One put a lot of time in the offseason trying to get the right players signed. Their staff is bigger than ever. They're trying to really build on the little bits of success they found at the end of last split. And even 
last week, their games were much more measured than you would expect from Phoenix One. Some of the story about how Phoenix One was winning last week was like, oh, they just cheesed them and they'd randomly have these chaotic games. No, they're trying to be a very measured team in a lot of these games, and Baron's up. They're going to try and do a nice little Baron push-pull and get the fight they want. Well, Immortals are, I think, trying to run it down mid and get pressure going there, but Ryu... Well, I'm happy to out. get a kill. Dardock forced to ult again, though. And Ghost. Tidal Wave's gonna chase down, doesn't hit anyone, but it's gonna zone the rest of Immortals away, and Ryu is still shoving Poke towards the Squishies. Gonna cut off this lane and make sure it pushes in their favor. And that is just a death sentence for Dardock, not having Ultimate or Ghost on the Olaf. He is pretty much unable to participate in a 5v5 teamfight without those abilities, so Phoenix 1 just start right up, and if they're tanking properly, if Zig would get in the pit and tank that Baron for him, they'd be able to peel for a fight much more easily, but they're just gonna burst it down. Adrian's got a lot of healing, and they've got plenty of damage, so P1 is happy to take it without their tank. Baron up again, Gold Lead's starting to grow towards the out-of-control side of the spectrum, and Ryu's now finished his fourth item as Rapid Fire Cannon is done. You mentioned Koki dropping up a bit towards the late stage of the game. This is not one yeah. of those times. This is like the peak. He hits these items, and he's still incredibly powerful, but it's just the the multiplication isn't the same as like an old school Infinity Edge type marksman, which in this game, they do not exist. So essentially Ryu is really strong and the strongest person in the game at the moment. P1, we'll see if they can leverage all that strength. Try and knock down some inhibitor turrets in Immortal's base. This Baron push will be tricky to defend. But Immortal's gonna try something here. Haven't been really able to find a foothold, it feels like. The picks that they were finding in the first game, P1 have cleaned up a lot as far as sticking together, doing the appropriate management of these waves and having proper vision. I mean, Elder Dragon's up, Immortals might try and rush for it, but P1 are pressuring hard in mid lane right now. Yeah, they absolutely are, and they have the advantage to do so. We mentioned Immortals does not have great initiation tools, and they don't have great tanks, so they can get bursted down by Ryu if they walk into these fights. They, they have to try at some point, though, to get the fight. And they just cut them off here. That turret's gonna melt. Edge of Knife from Arrow is gonna keep him alive from Pobelter, and this inhibitor should fall pretty quickly. Immortal is not gonna look to defend this one, I don't think. And P1 able to take it down. Zig gets stunned, but that's not the target they want, and immediate ping top lane for Phoenix 1. Yeah, and I mean, Phoenix 1 is showing that they understand how these team compositions interact. <laughs> go all the way back to the draft phase, and Immortals did pick champions that they wanted to shove in every lane and kind of snowball the game. Because if they don't have that, Phoenix One just has so many more poke tools and initiation tools. So Immortals loses the poke game, the sustain game, the team fight game, and the initiation game because they pick laning. Well, maybe the whole game as well. Oh, his battle is gonna go wide, and that's just gonna keep the siege going for Phoenix One. Zeke tanking everything he can. Arrow almost takes out the Bard. We're not able to get that snipe down. That's gonna force them back to help us blinking a little lower, and Phoenix One are closing in for the kill. They really are. Second and hip down. Immortals would have to go all out, but they've already expended Bard Ultimate to little effectiveness. Phoenix One could even just walk for the third inhibitor and dare Immortals to fight them because they don't have a clean way of initiating. Just feels too easy. Phoenix One have the next wave prepped up as well. It's just all so clean today. And this turret's gonna melt. The Cody Sun ulti isn't gonna clean things out, and Zig is gonna get aggressive on the Dardock. Tidal waves in. Anori, we're gonna try and get a poke down as Cody Sun actually got killed by the Kha'Zix. Healing's gonna come through, and Hibbert is gonna fall down, and it's just disaster for Immortals. Yeah, Zig standing in front. Ryu nearly gets bursted down, but he's fine. He'll be sustaining up, and Phoenix One is trying to walk this one in. Big unkillable, huge bubble for Adrian after Arrow's ultimate, and now Anori goes in for the kill. Leaps forward, gets exhausted, and shut down by Flame. So it's gonna look a, look a little awkward on camera, but Phoenix One looking to still win, still win this one. Yeah, it's Dardock and Flame. Flame does do a bunch of damage, so three inhibitors down. They might have to wait. Ryu went back, so can't quite end it, but Zig looking kind of unkillable. As He's I got a package. That. He might be trying to fly in. Oh, he takes him down. There's Ryu straight to the back towards Zyg. No, he wants Flame instead. Gonna look for the big 1v1. Woo! And Jace looking to win it. Flame with the outplay shuts it all down. And now Dardock gonna chase towards Adrian. Throws an axe up mid-suspension. That's kind of cute. But Adrian is uh, he's having some trouble. That axe goes a little oh, short. Oh, my. Knock-up's good. Arrow gonna keep firing and hit. And now P1 are kind of trapped. Blast is gonna get yep. Arrow to safety, maybe. Things just got a little peculiar. Uh, I feel like the game is still pretty much in the hands of Phoenix One, but Flame trying to single-handedly keep him in this as he had a super solid 1v1 outplay on Ryu right there. But three inhibitors down with Nexus turrets down. We're going to watch the beginnings of this fight once again. Cody Sun halts, but <laughs> Mari just eats him on isolated Kazakhs, and he has 
No health or armor items of any kind on the Zig, so that'll happen. And then they just continue that fight, but this is the carnage that was left. Yep, Ole, Joni's back through his very exposed Nexus. Elder Dragon, oh, that's awkward, Adrian. Missed the angle on the Blast Cone. Doesn't matter though, I don't think they're going for the Dragon. Maybe waiting for the rest of the team. But they can also just go for the throat here. Anori gets some vision down. They can see all of our models hanging out in their base, trying yeah. to clean out the wave of minions. And this is another thing where it sucks to not have a normal marksman because that's where they excel in killing the super minions. There's like 10,000 health in each minion wave in each lane because multiple super minions are spawning in each lane once you have three inhibitors down. So it just takes a really long time for immortals to clear it. Um, Phoenix One's gonna walk up and kill the Nexus. Yeah, I mean, that's the plan at this stage. No Baron buff's gonna make it a little less free. For Phoenix yeah, they're going to try and fight him. I mean, they have I think. To. Good little trap. But Immortals have no choices left, really. And Zig just doesn't care. Maybe he cares a little more now. <laughs> oh, Ole finds Adrian. through. That's good. Arrow is actually one of the right. targets. Good flash out from Arrow. Adrian going to get stunned up. He's going to try and run away from it. Dada goes all in for the kill in the back line. And Ori's stunned in by Pobelta, but no one dead just yet. Dada almost going down. Yeah, and a lot of Zigs and Cinder damage did land. Pushing Zig back. Zig could recall, heal up, and then teleport on a minion to get back in here at full health. I think that's what we're going to see. There's literally nothing left but the Nexus for Immortals to fight for, but they are going to have to go in for it. P1 going to try and close it out. Arrow's taking poke on the other end, but Zig, he's just waiting for the minions. All I get is chunked. He's almost dead. And Phoenix One just going to lurch forward and try and take this down. Immortals backed into a corner trying to defend the Nexus, but it's already going down low. Phoenix One is going to leap forward. Flame's going to go down. The shutdown for Ryu. And there's the sweep for Phoenix One. And it was definitely one of the longer sweeps we've seen with over 90 minutes of game time in the 2-0. But at the end of the day, it is a 2-0. And Phoenix One moves to 4-1, which is a spectacular start to the split. Yep, trying to break the... Three-way tie for second place that started at the top of the day. They will now tie for first, I believe. I guess game to play for Cloud9. I mean, yeah, as far as sure, yeah. wins, they are tied, but win percentage, Cloud9 is still undefeated. And you looked at Phoenix One's reaction there. Definitely not excited. The Nori very hard on himself after that game because oh, yeah. after the first 20 minutes or so, it was clear that Dardoch did get the best of him in both of those games. And Phoenix One are not happy about being 4-1, and one, which is just kind of a huge change in the expectations from last year and shows you where this team wants to go. Yeah, I mean, knowing that it's a long season, going to move over, shake hands and exchange some hugs and smiles there with the, with the enemy team. But today, Phoenix won, start week three off with another solid looking win. And it seems like, again, the work that they put in, the infrastructure they invested in, the coach that they now have that's leading them every champ select, they're just building a super solid foundation because they know it's not about, you know, coming out of the gate early and then faltering at the end. That's yeah. the older model strategy. They want to make sure they surge into the playoffs and really challenge for the top spots. For sure, that's what they want to do. One thing we didn't mention after or during this game at all is the fact that Adrian is a former Immortals player and he was able to get the best from here. Big smile on his face and a good hug for Poe Belter at the end of that game. So it's got to feel pretty good for Adrian, even though he just picked Nami both games. Doesn't play the Zyra. So as far as the trend of when Adrian was on Immortals, why aren't you playing the meta supports? Feels like he's keeping that with him uh, with no Zyra pick, but still a successful game. You know, strong mages. Uh, I think we nerfed the redemption, nerfed some of the healing items. He's like, yep. nah, still good. We're going to take them all and try and get them happening there. Really funny stuff to watch. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 4-1 and one on Phoenix 1. Things, th this series was closer than we probably thought it was going to be, even though the end result is still the same. Well, it certainly looks that, but for more on that Phoenix 1 win, let's check in with Azale and the Phoenix 1 mid laner. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no interview just yet. I'm getting trolled. Okay, well, we're going to continue talking about that. Phoenix 1 mid laner. Ryu had a very strong game on this one as well with... I wish we could check the damage Delta Champions I know. in these games, but we have a small issue on this side of it. Uh, overall, we're going to continue the conversation about the main four and one. Yeah, I think the other side for models is things do look a little better. Uh, same issues seem to be still cropping up, and they are building up together. But I do like to at least change game plans here. Get Flame on the Jace, mm. get him to try and carry. Game 1 looked very close, and the 2-0 is yeah. a lot closer than the overall series looks if you just look at the scoreline. But a model still showing that even a change in game plan is not necessarily enough to take a win here. Yeah, I agree as well. Like, uh, Immortals does definitely have some growing to do, but they did grow from last week to this week. The trouble for them is whether or not they can play the same game as everyone else or if they have to win differently because Flame...
They tried, it looked like this week, to just go with whatever champions you're most comfortable on in the top lane and in the support position. We're just going to try and roll with those. And even with that, Poe Belter was still able to get pushed in the mid lane, so they just can't seem to put it all together. All right, well, we're going to try it one more time. For more on that Phoenix one, we'll now check in with Azale and Phoenix One's mid laner. Thanks, guys. Great cast on the day. I'm Azale here with Ryu, victorious mid laner, has been uh, putting on quite a show for us. And I wanted to start off by asking you, you had played in Europe in the past for quite some time, and now you've come to North America. Uh, what do you feel about the differences between the European LCS and the North American LCS? Uh, I think there is no big fit difference between NA and EU. I think pretty similar. Yeah. All right, so pretty similar between the two leagues, but Phoenix One, you guys are off to a very strong start so far. You've been playing very well. A lot of people have you as, as one of the top teams in the league. What are your expectations for the team? You know, how far do you think you guys can go this year? Uh, I just aiming for final you know, without him. So trying to go for the finals this year. And, um, uh, you know, I, I want to know, you've been putting on really good performances. A lot of people are, are talking about you as one of the best mid laners in the league, along with the likes of Bjergsen and Jensen. Uh, how do you think you stack up against the competition here in North America? Uh, I think so far I didn't play against good mid laner. I, I, I have to play against Bjergsen and Jensen, I think. Yeah. Uh, how do you think you'll do against them when you do play? Um, I don't know. We we see on Sunday. <laughs> okay, I guess we'll find out on Sunday. Uh, thanks, guys. That's it for us. We'll head it over to the analyst desk. You lied to me. There's no desk. Azale, get it right. I've made that mistake myself. Don't worry about it. Cyrene, we're back here to talk about Phoenix One winning 2-0. What do you want to start with? Uh, Ryu talking about playing against not great mid laners. Shots uh, fired, Paul Belter. <laughs> bang bang. But actually, Ryu is like actually stopping mid lane. I was looking at an yeah. interesting statistic that was experience difference at 10 minutes and he's like 400 experience up he's number one in the league over his opponents like ryu is crushing the lane and yeah. that's super early on so he's like actually just forcing people off of two waves plus right. it's not like you can magically gain up. more xp they're getting pushed out he's getting more from kills and whatnot so he's like really blasting that's good to see ryu i mean super solid double player of the game i think completely deserved carried the team fights both cases yeah it makes me really hyped up for that matchup on sunday that we, yeah. i can't shut up about but it's like good. You ryu should. playing against bjergsen that's going to be a really great one to see yeah i mean unfortunately tsm didn't go far enough at worlds to see it at worlds so you know ryu's got to bring it over to north america to play some na mid laners because they just didn't show up at worlds very clearly it's trying to boost us I'm, I'm putting the shots fired <laughs> in for the ulcs on their behalf while shooting us in the foot too yeah absolutely <laughs> hey you know what i just go for the easy jokes even if it's at my own expense uh, I don't want to talk about champ select, though. I thought Immortals, so I'm going to take the other side of it in a little bit, but I thought Immortals made a really bad choice in champ select. First round, red side, Jace, okay, I get. Like, there's a good chance that Jace is the best top player in the game right now. But why are you grabbing Syndra? Yeah. I, I don't know. I actually just Varus. like it. Exactly. You pick Varus in that slot instead, because if you pick Syndra there, the mid lane is not pinched in any way, shape, or form, right? And Syndra has enough counters that we've seen with Corky, Fizz, and even uh, Echo. Echo being played into it. So I think this is just absolutely wrong, because when you pick the Syndra, and when we had seen what order it was picked in, you pick the Syndra and the Jace. Well, they're going to answer and take the Varus away. Right. But they already have their jungler, they have the Varus, and they have the Corky. So they've matched mid. You let them counterpick mid lane. Exactly. Instead of last picking, like the Olaf was grabbed anyway. Yeah, count like you know, get your Syndra and then ban away things that are good against her. If exactly. you want to go for that. And I want to talk about that Olaf pickup because they're forced into that. Because the bans are Lee Sin, Graves, Rengar. And, and then the first you first pick causes. You're pinched four champions already. They get Varus because you don't take it. Olaf is your third pick because yeah. you are either picking your AD carry in that third slot mm -hmm. or you're taking your jungler. Right. If you take your AD carry there, they pinch jungle and they ban Rek'Sai, Olaf. You're now on your seventh jungler when you have to pick. Yep. If you pick Olaf there, they ban Jin, Ash, and you're forced onto your third non-lethality edge of night building meta uh, champion for AD carry. Yeah. So you double pinch yourself by picking Syndra and Jace. Yeah, you guarantee that you're going to get some role pretty screwed out here, you know, based on the pools. If I want to try to play as though this is smart of them, if I'm going to take their side and, and pretend it was a good champ select, it's because they want to play Ziggs there. They said, okay, game one didn't quite work. You know what is working? Flame playing Jace, great. Let's just play a wave clear team. Let's just play Syndra, beautiful wave clear, lane priority. Ziggs should be shoving all the time, wave priority, and sick wave clear. Olaf, of all the junglers, actually has wave clear, and is pretty good. We, I mean, Dardoch outplayed Inori, I would say, both jungles. I here. agree. 
level six to level four at one point in this game. So like, oh my God, Immortals said, you know what? We'll bait it. We'll go for lane priority anywhere. Then why is there a bard here? Yep. No, Zy <laughs> no Zyra or Malzahar anywhere. It's like Karma ban. There's no, there's no Zyra or Malzahar, which yeah. blew my mind. Because I think the Olaf here was, okay, you can't take Zyra now or else I just have something that runs your Zyra down. So they went with something sure. that has a little bit more Adrian style and healing, but they weren't going to take the Zyra or the Malzahar anyway. Yeah. So they try to go for something because this converse, this uh, composition does not have engage. Yeah. So they have to go with something like a Thresh, like a Bard. But I think Zyra has enough for this composition. I mean, I don't think you need engage, right? If I'm going to look at this team comp, I, I see two issues. So one is you have no tank killing, right? Notice mm -hmm. that every time they're playing a lethality non-crit marksman, you're seeing Corky or you're seeing Cassiopeia, a champion that smashes team fights and unsurprisingly, Ryu smashed team fights and got double player of the game. Zig Syndra, you've got to win by 25 minutes or you have Edge of Night, and, and a Mob of Mortius. Mob of Mortius with a Spirit Visage. Or, sorry, side, over, side, over here, yes. right? Massive tank, right? You got Choose for Ma. You've, oh, here, here's your Hex Drinker. Here's oh. your Hex Drinker. Here's your Locket. Like, everyone's invincible to you 30 minutes into the game, and you're playing double AP. Yeah. When JC just played Pusher. It, just win the game in 20 minutes, pick a Zyra, win your lane, actually have priority instead of losing lane when you've got when you have the chance to play Zig Zyra, right? And you can snowball. Because Poalter had priority on mid, and Dardoch was two levels up. Yeah. There's no excuse to not smash bot lane when that happens. Yep. They had a winning top lane. They had a winning jungle. Yeah. And then in the mid lane, I mean, they kind of put themselves in a hole because the Corky came out. You said Poe Belter did have priority there. Yeah. But they double pinched themselves by picking the Syndra and it didn't do them any favors. And Ryu even came out on top getting player of the game. Yep. Gonna, gonna circle back on that one. Ryu, double player of the game. I think completely deserved. Absolutely wonderful play from him. The Cassiopeia was great. The Corky, beautiful as well. And I gotta say, Phoenix won, deserving of the 2 0. I do think there was improvements from, from Immortals. This series, as the cast said, was closer than we thought it was going to be coming into the day, but it's still now 4-1 and one versus 2-3. and three. Yeah, I think Dardoch is definitely a... Well, he was inconsistent, like, kind of high highs and low lows. I think this was actually a game where he had some relatively good uh, play all throughout. I think he actually played a little bit better than Inori the entire series, if you give mm -hmm. their performance. But I have to criticize Cody's son, because the play that got uh, Phoenix 1 to the Baron, yeah. both games, the first time and got them the lead, was Cody Sun getting caught. Yeah, right. And uh, unlucky. Happens. Un As an AD carry player, <laughs> of course you're gonna say it's, it's unlucky. It's only unlucky. All right, that's gonna do it for us here. We analyze the game. We'll get our next one up underway in a little bit. We gotta take a quick break, but our second match of the day is coming up. It's Envy versus Liquid. It's gonna be beautiful. Stay tuned. It's gonna be great. And uh, a short time ago, Azale caught up with Envy's bot laner to see how the team is feeling about the season so far. Hey guys, Azale here with Apollo to talk a little bit about Envy in your season. We haven't heard a lot from you guys yet and, you know, not off to, to the best start, the start you guys were hoping for, but obviously you had some problems with, you know, Lyra's visa and practice issues and stuff. How do you think things are shaping up now that you've had a little bit of time with Lyra? Um, I think, I mean, the visa issues is obviously kind of, it's, you know, it's difficult, but I don't really want to use that as an excuse. I think we, we, should, we should be performing better. I think we had winnable games, even when we had our subs. So it's just been a little bit difficult. Communication issues are obviously one thing, but I think it's just going to take time to mesh well together, taking more time than the other teams, at least. So, you know, if you don't want to place the blame on visas and things, where do you think that blame lies? Like, what, what is going wrong in these games that is keeping you from winning them? It's mainly, like, I think it's just mainly like mid late game shot calling. Um, we, we tend to make the wrong decisions. We can't close out the games even if we have like the early lead. So I think mean, it kind of just takes time and practice. We we just need to be better at it. Okay, so how about team environment? You know, that's something that a lot of people like to talk about when teams are doing well, everyone's kind of riding high. When teams are, are doing poorly, it can be a mixed bag. Some teams do tend to kind of collapse as far as team environment goes. How, how has MV been? How are spirits? Uh, actually, it's pretty good. I mean, <laughs> I've been on losing teams before, so I'm pretty... <laughs> I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty used to it by now, but I think everyone's handling it pretty well. I know we're not, you know, we haven't like given up yet. You know, obviously it's in the beginning of the season. We know that we're going to lose a few games. It's, I, I think we're doing pretty well. Awesome. Well, you're playing TL today. You know, how are, how are you preparing for that game? Are you guys confident going into that match? Yeah, it's, it's one of those matches where, I mean, we're both, you know, we're both kind of on the losing side of the, the standings. So it's going to, it's going to matter a lot right now. Because we were play, we'll play Team Liquid today and then C9 this weekend as well. So, I mean, it's like one of those matches that really matter. And I think we should do well. I hope we do well. All right. Well, thank you very much, Apollo. Best of luck against TL and C9 this weekend. Stick with us, guys. More NALCS after this. They have uh, they have to practice even harder because they're scared. Uh-huh, uh-huh.
Adrian here, fends him off with the bumble well, poke. Also, gonna try it in there as well. There's the stun in him, first blood. Ulti not quite there, lands actually in onto Dada, but Adrian's gonna get blown up here. The kill over to Dada, because Pope Elta solo oh. killed in that mid lane. Gonna try and move in for a Dada, just dives in. There's the stun, and that's gonna be a kill. And Nori, though, gonna take Ole out for the trade. Go slow, go slow, I'm coming. Hold off, weak. I'm coming. I don't know flash. I don't die. Brent, I can hold off. I can go. I can go. I can go. Syndra. Syndra, check play it. I can go Syndra. Syndra, no flash. No, no, no. They're going from again. They've just found up. Cody Sun gonna get isolated and torn apart by the Kha'Zix. We're getting kind of unkillable. As He's got a package. He might be trying to fly in. Oh, he takes him down. There's Ryu straight to the back towards Zyke. No, he wants Flame instead. Gonna look for the big 1v1. Jace looking to win it. Flame with the outplay shuts it all down. And there's the sweep for Phoenix 1.